Hi, I'm Tidlini Hahn and this is my very soggy, weather-beaten, slightly misty, busy, miniature theatre of conflict. And I've just grown antlers. a video looking back over 2012 and this is it. You know I made 46 episodes of Titley's Busy Garden last year and the hardest part about making this video was not so much what to put in but what to leave out. What I've done in the end is I've put together montages of sequences of themes that ran throughout the year. So without further ado let's get this review going and I've got one piece of advice for you. you find yourself a nice comfy chair, sit down, drink tea, Smoke. I like toys. Like any good gardening soldier, I have an array of weaponry in my arsenal for pruning. Obviously, I've got my secateurs. I've also got my lovely tree loppers. But third in my arsenal is my alligator. Wait a minute. <laughs> There's one more bit of brutality required at the top here, and for that, I've got my trusty tree lopper. Toys! You're talking to me? Let's lock and load. Just don't mess with Titley when she's got a hammer in her hand. Here's a little tip. If you're looking for a gift for someone, a power screwdriver is possibly one of the most useful tools you can ever own. I like toys. This is my strawberry patch and I haven't really cleaned it up from last season. There's quite a lot of strawberry plants in here but I need to get rid of all this old dead vegetation. So what I'm going to do this year, because I don't know how old these plants are, is I'm going to pot runners as I find them during the season. And then at the end of the season I'm going to clear the bed and plant all new plants. But all is not well in Strawberry Town. This, to me, looks like the work of an insect that just eats strawberry seeds. You see how it's munched away at the outer surface? That's not slugs or snails. That's a pest. And it's one of those pests I can't do an awful lot about, other than rotate the crop for next year. The strawberries are also starting to put out some runners too, so in the next couple of weeks I'm going to try and get these established into pots. Woohoo! I picked a monster! So here's how it's going to work. I've got a runner here and you can see this little plant forming. It's already got some nice roots on it. So I'll put a pot of compost underneath the roots, make sure the roots go in. And then I've got a little metal hoop here made from one millimetre galvanised wire. You can get that from a hardware store. And I'll just pin it in place and then snip off the excess shoot. And that'll help it divert all its energy into this little plant here. It's been a whole 10 days since I pegged out these strawberry plants, so they should be well rooted by now, so it's time to undock from the mothership. These 30 strawberry plants carry with them the hopes and dreams of one woman. The dream to have a strawberry patch free from the tyranny of birds, free from the scourge of slugs and snails and other beastly crawling things. In simple words, to have a fabulous strawberry patch with fabulous strawberries. Well, job number one is obviously going to be to dig out the existing plants. Well, that's job well and truly done. Push it in as far as it'll go to start with. Now next year when the fruit appears, I can just hang a net across these six poles to keep the birds off. <laughs> And there we are, Strawberry Patch 2.0 with improved user interface and enhanced security. No doubt I'll have to issue some system updates as the year goes on, but for now, job done. Do 
you can see I've cut out the dead canes, I've tidied up the living canes, and the dog has magically appeared in the picture. You're posing now, dog, aren't you? Eh? You're just posing. Oh, great. That's it. Just sit in the flower bed. Why don't you? Hello, Poppy. Have you come to help? Have you come to help me today? That's a very good thing to do, isn't it? Yes, it's a very good thing to do. Hello, Panny Pop. Have you come to help? Have you, sweetheart? Have you come to help me? Come to help me dig? Yes. It's good to dig, isn't it? No, it's not good to dig. Oh, well. You're entitled to your opinion. Of course you're being helpful today, Poppy. You're standing guard today. Good boy. recognize that silhouette outside standing on the pagoda. I don't know what's he gonna do. That's it, you carry on looking all cute and lovely, but I know the real truth. Ho ho ho, yes you can consider taking your very last dump in this patch for a while my friend. Oh thank you very much, so kind. Look I found his new secret base. Um, excuse me? Yes, I should think so too. And the last thing I'm going to plant up today are some leeks. It's a good time of year to be planting leeks. I'm going to start mine off indoors. Just make a couple of little trenches with my fingers. Sprinkle the seeds in. They're pretty hardy things, leeks, so I'm not worried about the frost. I've still got some over means I could plant some later on if these don't work. Cover the soil over, give them a light sprinkle of water and wait. Some popping up here. It'll be time to pop them on within probably three to four weeks I'm guessing. So there's 24 leek plants all nicely potted up. Give them a good water. Now I need a fat pointy piece of wood like this, otherwise known as a dibber. And I'm going to dib a series of holes to 20 centimetres. And then into each dibbed hole, I'll carefully lower in a leak. If these don't turn into big fat leaks, I'm going to blame it on Monty Don. Now let's just spend a moment to look at the leaks, because we haven't talked about them for some time. Some of them are a bit on the thin side, but others are looking proper kosher. Maybe Monty Don was right after all. I'm not going to throw these ties and these posts away because they'll come in handy elsewhere in the garden. I'll use these tree ties to hold it in place. I used to have four of these but I can't find three of them. I thought I had some pliers. Oh! One's fell on the floor! No! It's not supposed to happen. I've lost my bulb. I had a bulb a minute ago. Oh, you'll do. I can't see where the blessed string's gone. Pull it out and start again. I'm just going to screw some cross pieces across the top of these members here using one each deck screws. Which aren't long enough. Good news everyone, I managed to find those tree ties that I couldn't find last week. So here are my courgettes and as you can see they've been going rampant and it also confirmed my fear that these things are just weeds so they're coming out. I've chosen what I think are the three most healthy little plants. They've certainly all got roots poking out the bottom and all I need to do is cut slits into the bag and poke them in. One word. Triffids. They're going berserk. They're loving it at the moment. The courgettes are going absolutely mental. On reflection, maybe I should only have planted two courgettes in that grow bag. Never mind. This is the remains of my first courgette flower and this is the little courgette that's growing behind it. Oh, it's so exciting! I'm going to have courgettes for tea soon. Brilliant! But look at this. Just look at him. Isn't he lovely? Oh, he's all chunky and juicy. And this one. And there's a lot of flowers down here too. Courgettes for tea, not far away. 
Courgettes. Oh, he's certainly a chunky little doodad, isn't he? Isn't he lovely? It's a little less crowded in the greenhouse this week, and do you know why? No, then let me tell you why. The courgettes have gone. Yes, I dragged them screaming and kicking, well actually they came quite quietly, outside and put them by the greenhouse. And I have to say, they do seem to be thriving rather in this new environment. It's time to say a final farewell to the courgettes. They've given us some good meals throughout the year and God bless them, they've had enough now. <laughs> Gardening is not a sedate pastime. It's a war on terror. Well, the light's beginning to fade and I've had enough now. And that's the problem with gardening in the winter is that the days are short and the jobs are long. There's something deeply satisfying about weeding. I don't know what it is yet because I haven't found it. But apparently there's something deeply satisfying about it. Oh, oh, oh. Actually, do you remember the Hair Bear Bunch? That was a classic cartoon right up there with Scooby-Doo, Speed Buggy and Hong Kong Fooey. Back in the days when cartoons were innocent and cars could talk and dogs could do Kung Fu. <sighs> it always helps to hum or sing while you're doing something tedious like digging a bed over. You see, gardening isn't all sex and glamour. Sometimes it's really quite tedious. One important thing about gardening is you should reward yourself from time to time with a nice cup of tea. Just talk amongst yourselves for a minute. Now for the last three weeks I've had the same question pretty much every day. When are you going to grow some beetroot? So for 48 pence I've been out and bought some beetroot seeds. It's surprising how cheaply you can buy domestic bliss sometimes. Gardening really is a, a mixture of the, the now and the strategic. Somebody asked me this week, they said, Tiddly, is it necessary when gardening to do so much weeding? To which I say, oh yeah. The problem with tall plants is they don't always seem to be able to support themselves. I mean, look at this, it's just gone... <laughs> now there's a sight I like to see. Bees in the garden. Now we all need love in our lives and from time to time we need a bit of support. And while we're on the subject of love and affection, as you can see, this is the plantain that most of you correctly identified for me. I've given it no love at all because it's a weed. Good riddance. Can you hear how the motor mower started up? I don't know what it is about people around here, but they all seem to have motor mowers. I mean, none of them have a particularly big lawn. So what is it about motor mowers? Is it a, a, a guy thing? Oh, 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 oh. I like science. There is something deeply satisfying about harvesting your own food. It's only really the sunshine that's stopping me from going mad. I'm pretty pragmatic when it comes to moving plants around. Sometimes I win, sometimes I lose. But if you don't try, then you're never going to win. I have to say that gardening when the weather's like this, oh, it's dripping on my head. Gardening when the weather's like this isn't a whole lot of fun. But somebody's got to do it. And I'll tell you something else about November. There aren't many songs with November in the title. And those that there are, pretty depressing. So, I hereby declare November a rubbish month. It doesn't matter how good a gardener you are, whether you're good or bad, the weather always has the potential to get in the way. And on that note, I'm going to have a cup of coffee and we'll go to a commercial break. New from Tidlico comes the Acme Mark I fruit cage. With its simple design from bits of old wood and some not so old bits of wood, this elegant and functional fruit cage can be dismantled for storing over winter. Wicked! 
The high quality net is bird resistant and hung on nails from the frame, making it easy to remove. But a flap in the side allows you to get in and out with ease to pick your fruit. All you need to do is remember how to get back out again. The new Titlico Acme Mark I fruit cage. It's totally tickly tastic <laughs>
on here, big boys. Have a cigar, you're gonna go far. <laughs> die little weedies, die little weedies, die, 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 die little weedies. Poo, glorious poo. Don't eat it with custard while we're in the mood. Something that rhymes with custard. Dem, beans, dem, beans, dem. French beans, dem, beans, dem, beans, dem. French beans. Grumble while you work. <coughs> yeah, fair is where boots and you gotta believe me. I saw it, I saw it with my own two eyes. All right now. <laughs> Nights in white satin. Almost reaching the end. I'm in the mood for harvesting. I feel good. -na 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 -na. Like I knew that I would now. -na 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 -na. Sing along now. Four lovely tomato plants that I bought this week. These are money makers. We had quite a nasty little frost at the end of the last week and unfortunately there were a few casualties. One of my tomato plants seems to have survived. One of them has definitely gone and the other one, well, the jury's still out. So I've rushed out and bought a few more tomato plants. These aren't the same moneymaker variety that I had before. They're one called San Marzano and they're a plum tomato. The tomato plants are certainly doing quite well and the moneymaker on the left seems to be recovering quite nicely. Despite my best efforts, this moneymaker plant is absolutely determined to have a bush-like habit. So I'm going to have to support this, otherwise I'm going to lose the fruit here. I've just given my tomatoes their daily water and they really are needing a good daily water. But it looks like I'm going to have some tomatoes this year for sure. Now that that little problem is solved, I can use this bowl to pick my first tomatoes. Here comes the first one. Dink. <laughs> Look at his little beauty. <laughs> He's not the only one either. Okay, so I've only got four at the moment, but hey, I've got to start somewhere. I have no idea what the ride of the Valkyries has to do with tomato picking. Well, I've got a couple of pounds of tomatoes here. I've got some nice moneymaker tomatoes, which would be good for the salads. And I've also got quite a few small plum tomatoes. They'll make a nice sauce. I've hacked out an awful lot of the tomato foliage. The main result is that my tomatoes are getting a lot more light, a lot more air, and they need it at this time of year to help the fruit to ripen. Well, that's quite another good crop there, actually. I've got some nice moneymaker tomatoes and a couple of decent, juicy San Marzano tomatoes. Well, that's it. All that's left are a few tomatoes which need to ripen, and once they're ripened, season over. I've learnt an awful lot about tomato growing this year and I think rule number one is don't crowd them so much. But secondly, I need to be more active in pinching out. And the problem is compounded because if they're crowded, you can't see what to pinch out and what not to. I ought to pick the last of these tomatoes and then send these plants on their date with destiny. really are absolutely gorgeous. Mm. Don't mind me, will you? Oh! Mm. <laughs> Smells like a strawberry. Mm. Well, there's not really enough to make a pavlova here, but there's certainly enough to add into a yoghurt tonight, assuming they last that long. Mm. I love raspberries. And I think I'm tempted to pick my first blueberry. 
and taste it. Now that's what I call total blueberry satisfaction. There aren't many chostaberries left on this tree and do you know why? Because we've scoffed a lot. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, that is so, so sweet. It's absolutely delicious. Oh yeah. And I'll try very hard not to eat any. Oh dear, I've failed. Tomato, I think I love you. If I smoked, I'd feel the need for a cigarette right now. So there we are, four types of chilli, a bonnet type, a jalapeno type, a desi type and some bird's eye chilies. Looks like it's going to be one hot summer. And it won't be too long before I need to pot some of these chilli plants up as well. Dribble, dribble, dribble with my dribblesome watering can. Some of my chilli plants are doing exceptionally well and the roots are starting to poke through the bottom of the pots. The chilies are still doing quite well despite being under attack from the earwigs. I've now got the desi chilies on the floor because they seem to be growing the tallest. I've got my bonnet type chilies here. I've got my jalapeno type chilies in the middle and on the right are my bird's eye chilies. And they're all just two rows deep now instead of three and they're all growing this side of the staging rather than trying to get up through it. There was shocking news today of a tragedy in the greenhouse. Our reporter Titli Nihan is at the scene. Thanks Titli, I'm in a very hot and sweaty greenhouse and I can confirm that in fact the desi gillies have grown so tall that they're falling over. I spoke earlier to one of the locals that witnessed this tragic event. Oh, it was terrible like. I went in there one morning, right, and they were just lying on the ground, helpless. Such a shame, because they, they couldn't get themselves up. So it was then that I realised I'd have to repot them like, you know. Got some absolutely cracking chilies here. I mean, look at that one. There's about a pound of chilies here and this is going to be absolutely perfect for making a delicious pickle. I've come inside into the kitchen because I wanted to check on this bubbling, seething mass in the pan. I've been picking ripe chilies all week and finally I had enough to make myself a chilli relish. Take a look. It's not too far off ready actually. It needs to reduce down a bit more though. But I will just take a little taste. Oh, booyah! That is serious. Mmm. Well, that's a fair old harvest of chilies. No, I'm not going to get any more chilies off these plants this year, and the frost will soon take care of them. Bye bye. No, I'm not growing cats in compost. I'd left the greenhouse door slightly ajar and this neighbour's cat spent all morning in the greenhouse, getting himself comfy, having a little doze. Oh yes, he was happy in his little box, even washing himself before settling back down to sleep again. It's the last time I leave that door open. Right, now I can put some things back in. And presto, 
I'm back in the greenhouse again. I'm probably going to be back in the greenhouse most weeks. A, because there's stuff happening and B, B, because I'm going to make stuff happen. When I came in here first, after coming back off vacation, it was a bit steamy. So I thought I'd open this vent. And within 30 seconds of me opening this, a little black face appeared there going meow. So if I'm going to have that vent open, I need to make it secure. It's getting more and more like a jungle in here every day. I've got a bit of a problem in this greenhouse, apart from the fact it's kind of full of green, which I suppose is what a greenhouse is supposed to be full of. What can I say except that it's still extremely green in here? But I'm just completely overcome, literally. It's just so empty in here now I can dance about. But I won't because I've got all these pots and things to wash up. Well, I reckon we're almost ready for winter. Anyway, I've got my sulphur greenhouse candle, I've got my boxer matches, I've got all the plants out of the greenhouse. Well, there was only really the parsley and the thyme, so let's light the candle. It's looking pretty clear in there at the moment, so I'm going in. Slightly sulphurous. Oh, it's not too bad. I'll pick this tin up. Take that away. Yes, not bad. Not bad at all. Here's rhubarb. There we are. Six rather nice juicy sticks of rhubarb. As a bonus, these fetching sun hats are available to purchase on titlybusykitchen.com. But hurry, they're only available for a limited time period. I filled my tub up. I think I need another one. Well, I reckon that's enough fruit picking for one day, don't you? Now all I've got to do is work out what I'm going to do with it all. Well, these are the three biggest and best. Not brilliant, but the rest? Not much bigger than pickling onions. Pickling onions. Now there's an idea. Well, that's a much more interesting bunch of onions. Well, that's the first time I've ever grown onions and I've learned a couple of things. One is not to waste my time growing red onions again. But secondly, be a bit more selective about the type of onion I grow. I think I'll grow some more next year. There's quite a few of my catcher apples which have fallen onto the ground and they're really quite small. But I'm not going to let them go to waste. No siree, Bob. I'll pick them up. There's actually quite a lot of them. But they're a bit small to do anything with, really. I do have a juicer, so I think these are destined for juice. Well, I think there's too many here for tea, but I do think there's enough here for a lovely blackberry tart. Well, that's not so bad. That's probably about a third of my apple crop for this year. Well, that's another lovely crop of beans. I'm picking about this many beans every few days. Most of them are going in the freezer. I don't know, you go away for 10 days and this happens. This is the first year I've ever grown beans and I have to say, it won't be the last. Hubby's certainly gonna be pleased. That's a lot of, lot of apples I've got here, and they're not bad at all. I'm going to be making a lot of apple pies. Do you want some? Oh, he's going to fall off! He's going to fall off! Oh, he fell off! 
but only as far as the seed tray. Over the last few months I've been working really hard in secret to perfect smell vision simply so you can enjoy the same smells that I enjoy from my garden. So when you see the word sniff appear at the top of your screen, take a deep breath through your nostrils like this. OK, then let's begin. Right, who wants to see my butt? You do? All right, get ready, here it comes. What do you mean? You didn't really think I was going to... You sick little monkey. I absolutely love running my hands through time and then sniffing it. But don't get the wrong idea, I'm not some kind of time perv. Well that's all that me and my broccoli hat have got time for this week. I know that some of you have been watching since the very first episode and to express my gratitude to all of you, I'm going to hop. Well, given that 2012 was the wettest year on record in England and Wales, it's amazing I've got any gardening done at all. I hope you enjoyed that and I do hope that you'll be able to join me in 2013 for season two of Titley's Busy Garden. And you shouldn't have had that garlic bread. <laughs>